So last fall, my buddy Alfred and I built this gigantic house for all of my ducks, geese, and chickens. And over the last year, this building has held up remarkably well. It served as an outstanding home for all of my birds during the winter. It actually stayed consistently 20 degrees warmer inside here than it was outside. And then over the summer months, I've been using it to grow various food crops, including pumpkins and cabbages. And there was a whole bunch of buckwheat, but unfortunately some rowdy teenage geese took care of that. Uh, that's not good. That's not good at all. Oh. Gosh. What have you guys done? We have absolutely decimated the hoop creep. But now that the weather's getting colder, please notice that I decided to put on gloves before shooting this video today. Your hands are cold. You want to put them in Uncle Wally's pocket? <laughs> it's time for me to get this building ready for winter and for moving my birds in, which I will probably do in the next couple of weeks, depending how quickly it gets really cold. And so to start things off, I'm actually going to start harvesting certain things like my pumpkins here. So you might have noticed that I just pulled these pumpkins right here from my stash that are growing out here. Even though I started growing them with the intention of making them food for my animals, I'm actually not going to feed these dozen pumpkins to my animals. So as so many of you guys know, here in Northern Vermont, we've had a very, very wet summer. And as a result of that wet summer, many pumpkin and squash crops in this area have gone really bad and been very difficult for folks. But because I was growing my pumpkins inside this greenhouse, I was just simply running this water hose that I have in here that basically waters all the crops once a week. And so I was able to very carefully control the moisture that ended up in here, which means that a lot of the problems that many other growers of squash and winter squash in particular were struggling with, I didn't have to deal with here. And we were protected. And now my buddy Jeff, who's a brewer, he's actually the guy who supplies me the grains that I feed to my pigs. If you're ever in St. Johnsbury, Vermont, you gotta go check out Whirly Gig Brewery. They do some great beer. Well, he texted me saying that he needed to find a local source for his pumpkins for his fall pumpkin beer. And so yes, these pumpkins are not going to feed my animals, but rather they're going to be making beer for folks. What do you think about that, Abby? Huh? You're too busy taking a nap here inside the greenhouse. It is so much warmer in here compared to outside. Oh, I don't blame you, sweetie. <laughs> you want that belly rub? You want that belly rub? Yeah. Now, for the most part, though, I'm not going to rip up the other crops that are in here. Like you can see some cabbages that are still growing. You can see there's a ton of amaranth scattered all throughout here. And then there's lots of pumpkins inside of here that are still growing. And so I'm not going to rip up my water infrastructure yet. And I'm going to let everything kind of keep doing its thing. Now, some of them, like these guys right here, might not develop all the way, and that's okay. The animals are still gonna enjoy them, so I'm gonna let them keep growing for as long as I can. And even when I start to move like things like the chicken coop that's up on the top of the pasture inside of here, I'm not gonna get too worried about it. By the way, all summer, this has been one of Pablo's favorite places to patrol because it's a very attractive habitat for mice. And so Pablo has been just cleaning up in here all summer long. He loves it. Like, look at that. There's a couple more pumpkins that are just growing. And I have done this with very, very little effort. I haven't bothered to weed, obviously. And really all I've ever done inside of here is once a week, turn on the water for about 30 minutes so that the ground gets a good soaking so that there's enough moisture. And then quite honestly, mother nature has just done all the rest. I know there were folks who were asking me about the chaos garden that I started over here where I just started to like scatter random seeds. Most of that hasn't taken either the pumpkins or the amaranth really kind of took over in this area. But I thought I saw winter squash growing somewhere in here. By the way, because this is actually closer to the door, this area got a little bit wet and you can see that powdery mildew forming on those leaves, which was not a problem for the more interior pumpkin plants. But yeah, there's a lot more that are gonna just keep growing inside of here. I can just hang out in here observing for hours. It's a lot of fun. Oh, here's that. Yeah, look, I think that looks like a, a butternut squash, maybe. So yeah, there's gonna still be probably about 40 or 50 pumpkins for the other birds to eat once they move in here this fall. And speaking of birds wanting pumpkins, earlier this morning, I started another experiment. We should head on over to the young chicken coop and see what's happening. Really? 
release the Cluckin! I tried to see if I could get the chickens to carve a YouTube logo. But it looks like it didn't turn out very well. <laughs> They're still working on things. What do you think, Abs? Just give them some more time. So yeah, my chickens though are starting to get much more mature and I know folks have been asking me about their different breeds and so let me go through the rundown. So these two right here, they're black Australorps, sort of general purpose egg laying chicken. They have a decent size to them. They produce a lot of good eggs. And what's a really nice feature about the black Australorp is because they're all black like that, they tend to look like crows to hawks and owls, which might keep the hawks and owls more away from my chicken flocks. And so right now our main rooster, Black Francis, he's a black Australorp. And we've just added a couple more female black Australorps as well. And so I want to have some of those genetics in my flock. You can see this black and white chicken right here. She's a Bard Rock. I actually have two new Bard Rocks. You can see the second one right there. Bard Rocks are another great cold hardy egg laying bird. I have Bard Rocks in my current adult flock and I've had them for years and I really love them. I think they're very pretty as well as just great egg layers. In my opinion, you can't go wrong with the Rhode Island Reds, which you see that girl right over there. She's a Rhode Island Red. I think I have three Rhode Island Reds in my flock, including that one. And then there's one all the way in the back there against the wall. The Bard Rock, the Rhode Island Red, and the New Hampshire Red. Gosh, for this area and this part of the country, they are probably your best option for egg layers, particularly if you're doing a free range system. Now you're gonna notice this gray chicken right here, as well as this gray chicken right here on the left, as well as this gray chicken right here. All three of them are actually the same breed. All three of them are blue Cochin chickens. Cochins are just really nice, friendly, fluffy birds. They are solid egg layers. They're known for their fluffy feet. They also have a tendency to go broody. Right now in my main flock, I have one Cochin in Carmen the chicken. Carmen has been with me for years and she's one of my favorite chickens we have on this farm. And so I decided I wanted to introduce some more Cochins into the mix. And I think these blue ones are just really pretty. Don't, don't lick her. This is my chicken. You do not know. No, we don't touch chickens, remember? That's the rule. That's why you're in your training period this morning. Oh, yeah, you want me to give you five? Okay, good girl, good girl. This chicken right here, she's a cream leg bar chicken. Cream leg bars are good foragers, kind of independent, and overall just a good hardy chicken. They're a little bit lighter weight than other breeds, so they're not good for dual purpose. But the really cool thing about a cream leg bar chicken is that they lay these very nicely colored blue eggs. And so I'm anticipating getting some color into my flock. This gal right here, if you notice her feathers, they're very pretty. She can get a little bit vocal, but you'll notice these pretty feathers. She's a breed of chicken known as the Sicilian Buttercup. The Buttercup chicken is a really good forager. They're pretty good in terms of being cold hardy. They're very good in terms of their egg production. But one of the most notable things about the Buttercup is that the comb on the chicken, so that means the part that grows up here on the top of their head. So as she grows older, this comb is gonna kind of grow out and almost be like rosebuds. I think it's actually even called like a rosebud comb. If you're wondering what it looks like when they're adults, it kind of looks like this. And so I'm very excited to see how she ends up growing up. And again, I think she's a very pretty bird. And then the last chicken breed I wanna share with you guys today is this one right here. This gal is a breed known as the Salmon Favaroli. Favaroli is a French breed of chicken. They are generally known for being docile. They're pretty good in hot weather. They're pretty good in cold weather. They're pretty good at egg laying. They have a very nice cream colored egg that they produce. They also have a tendency to go broody. I will admit that adding Favarolis into my chicken flock is a little bit of a risk. They're generally not known for being very good free range chickens and so I do wonder if they're going to be successful in the system that I have for most of my chickens. So far with the rest of this flock they've been doing great but once they start to get moved out next spring I'm going to see how they do. There is a chance that I might take the two salmon favorolis that I have and make them a part of the weird chicken flock because if you look at them they are rather weird chickens. Abby dog I am insanely impressed with your behavior this morning. You have been doing so good. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but the entire time that I was talking about chickens, Abby has just been chilling out, hanging out, 
chewing on a bone, taking a nap, like all of the things that I would want to see out of her. The other day, a commenter asked me the question of, why do I still have these now mature chickens out in this yard versus trying to let them more free range around the farm? And the answer is actually twofold. One is I'm still admittedly a little bit nervous about Abby being unsupervised with so many young chickens. But then two, I'm finding that spending time in here with Abby and the chickens every day has been great for her training. Like think about even that video I put out a couple weeks ago about Abby with the white chickens. Even in that video, she was kind of you know, paying way too much attention to him and sort of knew that she was being watched. Now she just seems almost Toby dog like in terms of how chill she's being with these chickens. Lady Abington, you know, I am very proud of you. Morning weird chickens. Probably the weird chickens are gonna be the first chickens to move into the hoop coop for winter. Come on dogs, let's go. We're doing the duck and geese. Mr. Toby Dog, you got awfully filthy today. Toby's been running through the tall grass and both he and Abby have favorite napping spots right now and it's these like little dirt patches. So there and there and then there. And so if folks wonder why Toby looks so filthy right now, it's because he's been napping after running through the wet grass. By two o'clock today, he will look perfectly white and pristine because he's got that magical Maremma fur. But I do plan on getting both Toby and Abby professionally groomed the next few weeks, I usually do it like right before winter and then after winter. And so they each get two professional groomings per year. And then I do kind of all the interim stuff where Abby gets brushed out about once a week. Toby gets brushed out, I don't know, four or five times a week at this point. Hey, gooses. How's everybody doing? Morning, Ron Swanson. So interesting. Ever since I called the geese, Frankie the goose has started to hang out with all the other geese. I don't quite know what to make of that. Hey there, ducks. How's everybody doing? You know, this is a poll for viewers of these videos. Sometimes I get comments where people are complaining about when I show the ducks and geese because it's so chaotic and loud sometimes. Other folks ask me to do like an entire video exclusively dedicated to ducks and geese. And so that leaves me confused and not quite sure which way to go. So let me know what you think down in the comments. Food time, come and get it. So for all of you duck and goose keepers at home who like to use these swimming pools for keeping your birds watered in the summer months, and by the way, I don't recommend them for the winter because once you get freezing temps, they break very easily. This time of year, all the stores like Walmart and Home Depot and other places end up putting these pools on a deep discount. And so like I bought a bunch of these last year for I think $2 a piece and I just store them in the barn. And so, you know, you might want to be on the lookout for cheap kiddie pools. If you buy them now, they're probably like 10 or 20% of what they would typically cost in the middle of summer.
I don't know what happened there, Toby Dog. I set up a nice shot hoping to get some footage of the ducks and geese swimming and having their breakfast. They're all so busy over there. Still free ranging. I mean, as you can even tell, just looking at the grass, we haven't had a hard frost yet. We've had some slight frost, but nothing too bad. And it really does seem like we're gonna have a pretty warm fall. Of course, watch me eat those words. But yeah, the birds seem pretty happy. And I have no intention of moving them down there, at least for another week or two. But it'll happen pretty soon because what you don't want to have happen is have your water lines freeze up while they're still up here. I'd rather be prepared than surprised. Don't you agree, Ron Swanson? So these two ducks continue to take up residence here on the farm. Toby and Abby are not pleased with them being here, but they hang out here a lot. They seem rather comfortable with the whole area. I don't know, maybe they joined my duck flock, or maybe not. Did you know that they say that these little guys can predict the weather? Commonly called the woolly worm caterpillar or woolly bears, or technically they're known as the Isabella tiger moth. They're actually the larva of a certain type of moth. And so yeah, people often think that these caterpillars can actually predict the weather. Because the way that legend works is that each segment on the caterpillar represents a different week of winter. And what they say is that the orange ones represent fair weather, weeks of winter and the black ones represent harsh weeks of winter. So the more orange one of these guys has, the more likely it's gonna be a mild winter. I would actually say that particularly in the front segment there, it looks like there's more black than orange. And so who knows, maybe according to this guy, we're in for some rough winter weather. Did you know that one of these things can actually live for like 13 years? Now I don't personally put any stock in that folklore that these guys can predict winter, but I think the assumption is because they end up showing up at the end of summer and in the falls when you typically see them crawling around, people often associate them with winter coming. And so probably back in the day, farmers would say that, hey, let's look at these guys and use them as a sign of how harsh a winter we're gonna have. Which while it's interesting to me, I put as much stock in the woolly bear as I do the farmer's almanac. Really? Oh, there he is. All right, you little hitchhiker. There you go, buddy. Down you go. Can't forget to do the chores for the cattle as well as the other chickens. Good morning, Moo Crew. How do you do? Well, as you can see, their water trough has already filled up this morning. Because of the water trough placement, I don't have to move it today when they move over to that side of the paddock. Hey, Kels! Come on, Kels! Fresh grass, fresh grass, come on! Hey, Kels! Come on, Kels! Fresh grass, fresh grass, come on! Let's go, girls, come on! I will continue to say that this is the most satisfying moment of my day. I love watching them graze. It makes me so happy. Now it's important not to forget to move their mineral block as well as their scratching brush. But unfortunately, I don't have too much time to linger today because I got more work to do down below. Howdy chickens, how's everybody doing? So that's Black Francis, the black Australorp rooster that we have. She's a New Hampshire red, she's a Rhode Island red, she's a Rhode Island red. There's my cochin, Carmen, you can see. So the other birds are gonna end up growing up like her, but lighter colored. And you girls all look hungry. Here, we're gonna actually move your feed to another spot. This helps me distribute their manure a little bit. Chicken chores are done. What you up to there, baby bee? You up to mischief? She is always up to mischief. Let's go, Abby Dog. We're heading back down the hill. Wow, it sure is beautiful this morning. Looks like it's gonna be a dull colored fall. Definitely not as brilliant as last year's colors. I did my cattle and chicken chores so quick this morning. Abby's like confused by why I'm gone already. Come on, Abs, let's go. Good girl, good girl. All right, Abby, in you go. 
Now my next task of the day is gonna require a trip to the lumber yard. The local on-site lumber yard, that is. These lumber racks that I set up underneath the underhang of the barn allow me to store as much wood as I need without it turning into a total cluster. Four by fours, four by fours. It doesn't look like I have any four by fours right now, but I do have some two by sixes, and I think they'll work for this part of the project. So we'll take a couple of these. I also want a couple of these. I'm also gonna need to get a few things from over here. I'm gonna need one of these, one of these. Definitely can't forget this guy. I'll definitely want this one, but I probably also want this one. Now let me try to explain what I'm gonna be doing here. So while there were many things that worked out really well with the design of our hoop coop last year, the one thing I wasn't all that happy about was actually the doors. So I made the decision to have the doors open inward because I didn't want to have to deal with all the snow that builds up outside over the winter. And that actually turned out to be a really good decision. But the bad decision was I didn't put a lip on the door and I just had it exposed to the bare ground. And what would happen is all the bedding from the ducks and geese would build up and then it made it harder and harder to open and shut the door as the winter went on. And so I'm now going to attempt to build some new doors for my hoop coop. And these doors are gonna be winterproof doors. <laughs> Okay, so I've now removed both of the old doors. What do you think, Toby Dog? Feels a lot airier in here now, doesn't it? As you can see, I've now constructed a door frame. This door frame sits high enough up that I won't have the same problem with the buildup of bedding. Now I just need to make a door. 